Now, I know like, you from the Navy, what in the world is that? And I was looking at it like, okay, folks that are kind of like, what it is is those males, boys or girls, or well, boys or men, they have feminine traits. Those that, for whatever reason they mean, have those feminine traits, not saying they necessarily gay, but they got the feminine traits, they like soft, they ain't a hardcore rascal. Or somebody that has an eminent trait, they ain't gonna go mess with the hardcore rascals that mother like mine. They like, I ain't messing with them. Because they kind of intimidated. But you will see those that are soft, and it has those that are in touch with their feminine side, they usually find their way to somebody else that is the same capacity. I see them preachers a lot of times. I don't know if they get or not, but you notice that they, especially the young, they, they hang together. All of them got some traits that's kind of empty, but they hang together and be preaching hard. Don't know what's going on, but people with certain traits find each other. Amen. Because there's no threat there. Because they're like, I understand you. Okay? And so it's not necessarily saying they're gay, but they, they have feminine tendencies. Amen. They kind of saw it. You know, they ain't going to try to buck up on you, nothing like that. Amen. But you need to look at your clique. Who you're hanging out with, amen. Loneliness isn't as bad as hell. No, Jesus. I'd rather be lonely than going straight to hell. No, no, oh, no. Loneliness is not that bad. I don't, if, if that's the kind of friends I got to have, I don't need nothing. I'd be by myself. Amen. You got to understand that some things are not as bad as they may seem. Amen. I'd rather be lonely than on my trip and way to hell. Amen. And a lot of times, being misunderstood ain't as bad as going to hell. Because a lot of times, like, they just don't understand me. Like, I try to sit there and I talk with them. And, you know, I can't say that because they just don't understand me. But you try to, amen, amen and, uh, and do all kinds of things just to appeal to them and appease them. But it's okay to be misunderstood. The only one that can truly understand you is God. That's why you got to have that relationship. But we want to be understood by everybody. We want to, and maybe we'll keep trying to explain stuff until they get it. Don't do that. Sometimes you just got to take it. Okay, you just don't get what I'm saying. I can't change the words around. I can't change the sentence so that you can get it. You just don't understand me. That's cool. I'd rather be misunderstood than continue trying to beat some things into somebody and then just go to a point where you get mad and you anger and then you sin. Because you can be angry and sin not. But you can also get angry and then if you don't know how to control yourself, you end up in sin. Because there's a hedge built around each of us. Look at verse 14. It says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away in his own lust. That means ain't nobody do it to you. But you saw it and you took the opportunity. John the Revelator writes to a church in Pergamus, Thou hast held the doctrine of Balaam. I cannot curse what God has blessed. He sent what appeal to their own list, and they curse themselves. So all you gotta do is put, present people sometime with what they already want, and then they'll go ahead and give in. Then when lust have conceived, they bring forth sin, and sin when the spin is bring forth death. Verse 15 of the, the message says, Lust gets pregnant. And has a baby sin. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes the real killer. So you get impregnated with that lust, amen, and it creates a baby. Amen. Now, the reality is, what is it that you're struggling with? If you can't find sin, then the reality is, that means that you know it is God making you strong. Now, God will not test you with sin because it said God does not test with sin in order to disprove you or to cause you to go wrong. So if you're going through a trial, a situation, it's hurt, it's bad, it's up, ain't going like you want to. If you can't find sin in it, that means God is growing you. That means you can't understand what's going on and you did no wrong, you ain't sin. That means God is trying to take you somewhere. God is trying to develop you. So when you run into situations, look at yourself. If you haven't did anything, amen, there's no sin in it, then that means God is growing you. Amen. That means God is trying to take you somewhere. God is trying to elevate you. God is trying to put you in a position that he knows that you are supposed to be in. So look at it when you see a situation or a test coming. If you can't find sin, you know it's God making you stronger, better, and blessed is the man who endured endure temptation. For he shall receive the crown of life. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. That means that you're able to go through it, but you don't actually concede to it. You don't give in. You don't let your flesh, amen, flare up, amen, and then you end up doing something that you know you're not supposed to be doing. The key is we can't be falling. 
Whatever you're struggling with, you can't be false. You can't be fake. You got to be real. In order to get delivered, you got to say, God, you know what? This is me. And you already know it, but I, I just laid it down on the table. You got to be real about it. Amen. When I was raised, they mean up. You never admit too many struggles by your actions. Amen. And I knew a lot of folks, even in my family, that were alcoholics. You never go to them saying, going around talking about, yeah, I'm an alcoholic. I know I need to do better. Amen. And because you never really revealed intimate ideas and, and concepts about what you were going through, you really couldn't get no help. But back in the days, you didn't really talk about nothing like that. You didn't talk about alcoholism. You didn't talk about drugs. You didn't talk about... The only thing that you really talked about... I mean, my grandmother used to talk about God. That's it, because she went to church. Without her, we'd been in trouble. We wouldn't know none of that stuff. Amen. But you didn't talk about issues. Back in the days, you had issues just... They saw themselves, and, or the person that was in the church just prayed for you. Amen. Outside of that, you didn't go around and talk about, yeah... Alcoholism, being a drug addict, I mean a, a woman abuser. Folks, stuff happened and people just overlooked it. Yeah. Ain't nobody say nothing. Amen. Because everybody was trying to be phony. It was just, that's just how it was back then, amen. But the problem was evident and never really talked about anything other than God. But because the sad thing is some feel like they're in a backseat situation when they go through tests. Some people have tests that occur and they feel like, okay, what have I done, you know, I can't go to church because this is going wrong. I can't be around folks that, you know, they may look at me and, and see that something ain't like it's supposed to be. So you start feeling bad. You start beating yourself up when you miss in the place that you need to be because you feel like something. I just can't present myself like this because ain't everything ain't like it should be. And that's the worst mistake you can make is to stay by yourself when you're alone and in trouble, and in heartache, and you don't have nobody to uplift you and to pull you and take you and say, you know what, God got this under control. You know what, God can handle this. You need to be around those that will uplift you, help build you up when you tear yourself down. But you gotta be real. And the second thing is people sometimes don't tell everything when they testify. Some people won't say anything, so they don't risk being misunderstood. Some folks just so concerned about what folks are going to think about them when they testify and tell the truth that they just leave it to themselves. And then they never really help themselves or help anybody else. I tell folks, I could care less what you think about me. If I want to say it, I say it. If I don't, I don't. But the reality is, I know that, yes, I did a whole lot of stuff, and that's cool. And I know what God delivered me from, and yeah, you can be like, yes, yes, I did. Amen. Okay? Yes, I did. Show up. Amen. And what? But again, as Christians, we hate to do that because we don't, we, want, we don't want to feel like we're vulnerable. Just because you reveal and have a testimony don't mean you're vulnerable, don't mean somebody can go back and hold up your head. When you don't tell the folks no, it's like you're trying to hide something. And then it stuff start whispering and then all of a sudden it get blown out of proportion. Even if you make a mistake as you're walking, you can't be so afraid like, oh man. All of a sudden, when somebody else tells your testimony, that's when it's, that's when it's damaging. That's right. If you come out and say, yeah, I messed up. I did some stuff I know I shouldn't have did. I did some things that, you know what, oh, God forgive me because I know it was wrong. I can't change it because I did it. Well, it's, I mean, everything in the reality is, whether it's adultery, whether it's, I mean, whatever it is, whether you lied on somebody, I mean, all those type of things, if you don't actually, it's bad when somebody else has to tell it on them. Go ahead. Because if you haven't come to that resolve yet, then you still be in that point of like denial, like, no, 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 you're trying to discredit it, but you know yourself is what is right. So never actually get yourself in a situation where somebody else got to tell what you need. Be real about it. God wants you to be real. Don't be phony. Amen. If God can forgive you, your other folks can't, then that's on them. Me and God got it straight. Amen. You got to keep it moving, but you got to be real about it. Amen. You are not less of a Christian just because there are things in Christ that's working out in you. We get so mad because, and don't want to reveal that because, you know, God, yeah, I know people use that as an excuse. Yeah, I ain't, God ain't doing me yet. They still don't give me an excuse to just let me do the stuff that you know is wrong. Amen. Amen. And that's the whole point of, you know, being repentant means that you godly sorry. Go ahead. God ain't doing nobody yet, but that don't mean you keep doing the same thing over and over again. You may slip up, do some things wrong, you may not be thinking constantly and right. That's cool. Like, yeah, I messed up. You, I, we know God ain't doing with you, you ain't dead. 
until you're dead, you're going to always be able to be worked on. There's always going to be some stuff that me and God is working on. But if you got to teach me, you got to own up to it like, yeah, I messed up. I messed up. I hope you can forgive me because I know God has. If you don't, that's on you. I mean, we got to move forward. But you can't be fake about it. Amen. Amen. And even though I'm saying you're not less of a Christian, just because you do some things that you know ain't right, that don't mean I'm trying to make it easy for you because I know y'all make mistakes and this and that, but there ain't no license to go out and just do stuff and lie. Amen. I mean, because the reality is, again, God looks at your heart. If you lie and say, Lord, forgive me, you know, I ain't going to do it no more. He know you're lying. That's right. I used to do it all the time. Every night when I got home and I was so drunk and I didn't know what was going on, I'm like, God, man, if I can get through this, I ain't doing it no more. I, I ain't never taking another drink. I ain't, I ain't messing with so-and-so. Just let me get through this night. And then you get it the next morning. You know what you said. The only thing you hope is like, maybe if I die through the night, he'll think I meant it. So therefore, you know, I won't go to hell. Like right, God don't know you just try to get another pass to make it to the next day and then go do the same thing again. We all would have probably been in that state where they ask God to forgive us something we said we ain't doing no more and turn right around and consciously do it. But you just saying, God, that old prayer, like, if I die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to take. That's how you're doing. you just reciting words to make it sound good. So maybe God will think that you for real. So if you die, you won't go to hell. You get no chance. He know your heart. If he know you, you know you're going to do it again. you just sitting there trying to lie to God, trying to treat God. That's going to work. But I did it a whole lot. I did it for years. That's, that's that point where you kind of get in that relationship, but you ain't really in a relationship. It's like, I want to know you, but I'm like, I can't even really give up stuff, so I just need to repent. You think you can just repent forever on the same stuff every night? Nope. Like, come on, man, that ain't repenting. That's just saying some words to God, thinking that you're fooling God, that I know you're not for real. So, again, we all go through those stages where it's like, we there, but we ain't really there. Amen. If while I was young, I knew I wasn't the only one struggling, and that's what helped persons a lot of times because I probably didn't get saved when I could have got saved because I thought you had to have it together. Even though I saw folks in church not having it together, I just thought they were just like, why well, I want to be like them? And that was my whole thing is, I don't want to be like what I see that I know is wrong. So if I'm going to get saved and I actually, I know I ain't really right and ready. You know, and then a lot of times as youth, you don't understand because ain't nobody being real. Ain't all, everybody on church folks being so phony, you think they so holy and they living good on Sunday, they get out, they smoking, cursing, I mean, running them women, all of this stuff, drinking. They like, why? I don't want to be like that. So it was a deterrent for me, like, I ain't trying to live like that. I know I ain't got my stuff together. I know I'm trying to live a life that I want to enjoy. But the reality is, you got to understand, because it's a process, God will get you right. He just wants you to take that first step. Amen. So a lot of times, that's why you got to be real with your testimonies and your struggles. Yes, we struggle. But God is able to do everything but fail. Amen. God wants your test to be transformed into testimonies. You aren't the only one that can benefit. Other people also can. So God is taking your tests and transforming them into testimonies. All the hurt and the things that people have wronged you, people that didn't do stuff that you told them that you know was right. Everybody got to go through their own tests. Amen. Everybody got to go through their own transformation. As right as it is, I mean, people told me a lot of stuff not to do. But I did it anyway. Because I'm hard-headed. I, like, I, got, I don't believe you. I got to see it for myself. Because I think I'm smart enough to get around what happened to you. Most of us think we're smarter than the last person that did it. Amen. But that's usually not the case. But you got to understand, that's why it's personal. You're not as smart as you think you are. Without God, you're in trouble. All your intellect, it ain't going to help you. Amen. So to summarize, and like I said, because we all going through some things, amen, and God understands that we're in a time where even though we're going to that next place and beginning and building a relationship, right now the saints are going through some stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's some things happening, amen, you're like, wow, I never would have up it. I mean, like, this is the last thing that I would even, that would even been in my mind. But God is allowing us, amen, to go through some things so that we can come out, amen, and be in a position to have a testimony to help somebody else. 
Amen. Not only grow ourselves because in our trials, if we understand it and we keep it accurate, we realize that God is just growing us. Even when we removed ourselves from everything that we needed to be in, God was still growing us to get us to the point to realize we need to reconnect. Amen. It's okay, but you got to reconnect. So to advance to the predetermined goals that God ordains in each of us, he sends tests. So to get us to where God knows we are supposed to be, to get us in our purpose, 